Hello everybody, and welcome back to the next part in the Ratatouille walkthrough. Hopefully on this episode, we are going to finish the courtyard so that the next episode we can start the kitchen area. So, let's get started. And of course, go to the description, everybody, to answer the trivia question. Clean gutter is enough. To set up the chili pepper, swipe it with your tail. <laughs> A tail swipe is hot stuff, no? Bear to clear a path along the gutter remy. Oh, yeah, I'm all over it. All right, everybody. Today, let's talk about Circle 7 Animation. They were the sequel department of Pixar mainly focused on creating sequels to their first six Pixar movies that technically belong to Disney. And one of their first movies was going to be Toy Story 3, where Buzz Lightyear uh, was going to get shipped to Taiwan. In fact, all the Buzz Lightyears were going to be shipped to Taiwan because of a huge recall notice. And that Buzz Lightyear wasn't going to be repaired. Instead, he was going to be killed and replaced. And I think this could have been a really, really dark and emotional story. And honestly, I think it's kind of a shame that we didn't get this version of Toy Story 3. And interestingly enough, the subplot with the other toys needing to go to Taiwan to rescue Buzz actually would have involved them being found by a kid and taken to a daycare. Very, very similar to what happened in the original Toy Story 3. Which, I think that's kind of a funny coincidence. I also think this daycare subplot would have done a great job of breaking up the more serious aspects of the whole Buzz Lightyear being killed plot. Perhaps a chili pepper bomb would help, huh? One clean gutter.
The next sequel they were working on was for Finding Nemo 2, which would have followed Marlon, Nemo, and Dory finding Nemo's long lost brother. And I think this is an amazing idea for a movie, giving closure to Marlon after losing his wife. It also would have been interesting to see what the other side of the ocean would look like in the cold arctic waters. And it would have been really interesting as well to see how those fish survive. Staying on the topic of Finding Nemo, I just want to say that I think Finding Nemo could have one of the best Pixar soundtracks I've ever heard, especially the opening number, which honestly, that piece of music just gives me life. And how they even do it again at the end, but this time in a major key instead of a minor, absolutely amazing. The last of these movies was Monsters Inc. 2, Lost in Scare Dice. It would have taken place about a year after the original movie, and would have been about Mike and Sully surprising Boo on her birthday. Instead, they find an old lady, meaning they now need to go out and find Boo. Unfortunately to me, this movie just kind of seems like the opposite of Monsters Inc. without much originality or creativity involved. I'm also in the group of people who believe that we don't really need to see Boo make a return. And honestly, I think the ending to uh, Monsters Inc. basically just wraps up her character perfectly. We don't need her to come back. But in the end, Disney bought Pixar, Circle 7 Animation was shut down, 
and none of these movies actually will be released. Becoming nothing more than a legend of Disney. Okay, next we really need to talk about Pixar and them laying off 75 employees as they are no longer going to be focused on Disney Plus original series. To me, this just feels like Pixar is going further and further into the background. They started off with the straight uh, streaming movies. And now, they're not even going to be doing long-form animated series. To me, Pixar just feels like the black sheep of Disney and stands out from all the other uh, brands of Disney in the wrong way. I'm also getting a little worried that maybe what's happening to Pixar is now going to happen to Disney Animation. I believe you must really have Susan to work with. Did you know that originally, Andrew Stanton won flashbacks throughout the whole film, giving di different bits and pieces of Marlon and Cole's relationship, such as how they met, them moving into their first house, uh, Cole being pregnant with her kids, and then the final flashback was actually going to cut back and forth from the present day.
But then, during one of the final test screenings of the movie, they decided to cut out all the flashbacks, except for the one where Cole dies, and move that scene to the very beginning, and told the whole backstory linearly. In the end, I don't really know how to feel about this. Yeah, I think that's great they took out the flashbacks, but to me it's just kind of weird that they don't really talk about or mention Cole that much throughout Finding Nemo, making her feel very unimportant in the grand scheme of things. Did you know that the Ratatouille game was actually released, was actually announced on November 6, Eight whole months before the movie was released, and seven of the voice actors from the movie actually returned to do their voice for the game. Either I hit my head harder than I thought, or there's a rat that helped me with the soup. Why? How? Well, it doesn't matter. Thing is, I, I could use a tiny chef like you around the kitchen. How about I promise not to chase you anymore, and you promise to teach me to cook? Okay, then it's a deal. You know, I think this might be the start of something very special. Can we start tomorrow? Alright, that's going to do it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, just a reminder to check the description for the trivia question and to like and subscribe for more videos coming soon.